it looks like my head's gonna always be here. <laughs> but besides that, um, my name is Tanda Francis. Um, and I, I do, my work is focused on like presenting um, African presence in public places. And this presentation is called, We Are Here. Um, because I think that's a really simple way to say that that's the important thing to, um, to leave our mark and to be like, you know, to assert our presence and our, you know, and be, be, um, be known to be here because I realize we, we all, maybe we realize that when, when, um, when, uh, we are not, um, when, when there's a lack of representation, there becomes like, like a, like domino effect of like disastrous results with when you couldn't, when you basically lack communication and what the reality of, um, our shared experiences are. So, um, so let me uh, continue with the slides. Let's see what happens. Just, like cross our fingers on this. Okay. This is gonna introduce me. Hopefully we can just go ahead and do that. We might not be able to play video, <laughs> which is unfortunate because there's some um, content in there, but it just um, um, shows some of the work that I, I have done, that piece in particular, the, the creation process of this piece here. Um, and I'm gonna be going um, first, again, I'm gonna talk about uh, we are here and who is who are we? Um, this is people of African descent. Like this is like um, sort of, um, an origin story of the United States a little bit um, where, where um, this country has been, uh, has a certain kind of like public persona as to who it is. And, um, and one of the most famous um, uh, sort of um, promises uh, that um, this company uh, rep uses to represent itself is that kind of like um, say this, all men are created equal. This is something that was advertised like really loud uh, in this country, um, you know, throughout the world. And um, it has an actual um, problem in actually communicating that properly and, and really believing in its own, um, um, what it believes to be its truths. So, um, and um, this is again my, um, my motivation for doing the work that I do, um, which is uh, show uh, our presence, African American, African presence in public places, because of what we are, the message that we, messages that we are receiving automatically in um, through television, through public art, um, that standard public art, um, which uh, tends to have a sort of like uh, in this country very much uh, a leaning towards white supremacy. Um, without even, you know, just casually, without even really knows that I don't think, you know, to the point that uh, it's not clear to everyone that that's what it is, but it's, but there's something that is being said in how uh, we are presented in the public spaces and what we present to the public. Public sculptures are symbols of our collective values. They hold up a mirror to, our, to uh, visualize who we are and how we see ourselves in, in history. Here, hopefully you can see what I'm seeing. <laughs> I'm thinking that you might be seeing um, a, a smaller view of what I'm seeing. Is everyone seeing um, everything okay? Yes. Okay, you see the whole slide with the, te with the text? Yes. Um, oh, that was my concern. Okay, good. All right, so, yeah. <laughs> all right, good. So white supremacy in public art speaks volumes. Um, in this image, you can see, I mean, I think most people for a while, when you pass by a sculpture like this, is something that you didn't, you might just see, you know, a, you know, and just be like, you know, have a feeling of pride or whatever. This is this, you know, monumental, um, well-dressed man and, and, you know, hovering above a black, um, a black man who is like hovering, he's like on his knees. And this is um, this is a moment where like kind of like showing a turning point in, in our in our history where um, where where uh, 
where Abraham Lincoln is granting freedom to this poor guy. Um, <laughs> so it's just like the, the way it's being presented, the way what it is, it's like casually, it's just like um, there's a, um, a dominant and subordinate character and this person who has gone through a whole lot is just still on his knees. And this is what is being presented. And, um, and this sculpture has been in discussion a lot these days. I mean, you know, since the uh, 2020, like it's uh, since the BLM uprisings, things like that, um, it's been in, 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 in the air for a reason um, because uh, I actually started to present these slides be, um, around the time when I was trying to explain what I was doing with public art and like where no one has seen it at all. And now that it's in our public, it's in our minds, we have to, um, we know that also uh, an argument in, in favor of a sculpture like this is, uh, is, uh, is you know, people basically argue that there are African-Americans who would finance this piece, you know? And even if there's African-Americans financing it involved, it does not stop, you know, it does not um, damper the fact that it's definitely a white supremacist sculpture. Um, we have, you know, the money that were, was, was given towards the piece still came from the system where it's just, you know, you can't, it's, it's tied up in this um, in inequality. So we get to the point now where we're, you know, we're able to be talking about it and, and sort of, sort of do what we can to fix the situation. But um, again, again, these slides, I'm just showing my inspiration for what I do and what motivates me. And this is a slide of um, Dr. J. Um, J. Marin Sims, and he's actually a neighbor of you know he's he's actually his body is this piece is now in um in Brooklyn, um, but it was formerly in in right um, just off of Central Park and Fifth Avenue. Um, this guy is um, the considered the father father of modern gynecology. And, um, and the reason he got to where he has gotten in his work is, is, is basically using um, the bodies of slave women, enslaved women to, to you know, test, test out theories, just you know, use them as like guinea pigs and, and you know, used, uh, cut them open and, and, and um, worked on them without actually, without any anesthesia, when they had anesthesia at the time, but they wanted it, um, they had theories that, Black women didn't feel pain and things like that. So they would, you know, like they just, you know, didn't consider the, the human they were working on as human. And I don't know if you can see this image. Um, this is a painting of, of, um, of Sims and this kind of like environment, like kind of, it's like, you can see it's like a sort of a heroic, this is again, these white heroic men. And there's a shadow you can see at the bottom. And this is the woman who's being worked on. You know, she's, uh, this is a human that's not even in this painting considered to be human. Um, and and it's, a, it's a shame, like, it's like, it took how many years? Like, I think just about less than eight years ago, the piece was removed. It's been up for, for, for a very long time and without any, um, without any um, objection for, for very long, you know? And it's uh, it just, uh, just now our voices are being heard, like these activists here, um, when, when the piece was still in Central Park, they um, protested and they protested and, you know, many people protested, but they had eventually these, this, uh, this work um, was removed. Oh, and this slide, I have a little bit of, <laughs> I have, um, I, I, I sort of I wanted to show exactly how it might feel to actually pass a piece like this. If, you, you know, you might, walk by it and not be aware of what it is, but when you are and you know what these things are, it feels sort of demonic. So I sort of did this um, slide to show like, um, to demonstrate the feeling, the, the kind of feeling that you might, you know, not be aware of, like some people, people walk by these pieces and they know what these things represent and you can feel it, they ener energetically, um, you know, these are, pieces that are put up in the public, they're, they're much money is spent on it, time, energy, and um, uh, a group of people got together and okayed it. So once that happens, you have a feeling of um, uh, responsibility to the people who have to actually live around it. 
And when you don't do that, you're definitely just discarding or discarding a whole, you know, the people that, that, that matter, the people that actually um, work around the city, move around and actually are citizens, you know, uh, making, you know, your neighbors, you know, and it's like, uh, it's, I just, you know, that, that slide is to demonstrate that sort of the feeling. Same with, um, same with, uh, Columbus, you know, people are very, very proud of it. Like a lot of people are, you know, they are really upset that people have, um, that there's an issue with this, but, you know, um, we have to, in this country, start, you know, even through our public sculptures, be real about our history, because that is, that's the stuff that's going to be, you know, hanging around. This is, you know, when, when you guys start creating public works, this thing's going to last, you know, and they're going to be making them send in a message and it has to be, um, ooh, um, you still there? You still there? In a meeting. Uh, I must have been, uh, am I still here? Yes, you are. We see you. And the slides. And we see you in the slides. Yes, it's we all. We see hard. you in the slides, and you you're doing great. Okay, all right. I don't know. Okay, all right. So if I open this, are you going to see it? We're Hold seeing on. the tall tail tall tails. You see uh, my screen now? Now it's we, working. We're seeing um, we see, we see the slideshow presentation and a small version of you in the lower right hand corner. Okay, because I'm not seeing that. That's excellent. I'm not seeing that. Oh, there we are. Cool. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is like, I actually wrote this. This is during like, um, it, uh, this is 2020. Like there, where I was just like sort of communicating with people online about what was happening. And I realized how disjointed people we, we are from like reality. Like some people are living in a completely different universe. And I just was like, and this is just something that came to my mind. And as I was, my my um, social media started to become just like writing like historic historic facts. I, I I just wrote. I just realized and felt this. Like it says in 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 the in the U.S., we'd rather teach children tall tales of honest presidents chopping down cherry trees instead of our real history. So that when you try to have a conversation about how we've arrived here, we are told it, we where we are today, it's like discussing spirituality with people who still believe in the Easter bunny. Like it really is like that. Like you can't, like we can't, the, what we're experiencing now is like, we just, there's like a um, budding of heads of people who really fully believe into their separate sides. But a main issue is that we're not very honest in, in, um, in how we portray ourselves. And the, the offense, like people have to know, I really wish more people knew, know that the offense isn't as much as our past, but is how we're interpreting it today. Like we have to acknowledge like reality. And again, that is something that can be done through the work you do, you guys do, you will do with, with public art. Because this is the, the message that we, we put out there is like concrete, solid. It feels it's like actually like, you know, it, it's, it, it means something when you come, apart, come across a piece and, um, that, and, in, and your message is, is being put out there and it's like solid stone and bronze and, you know, and uh, so it's, uh, it's important. <laughs> um, let's go. Public sculptures set the stage for our lives. You know, this is what, you know, this is the recent um, um, uprisings where we're just out, we go out and we go out where we, we, where we meet around these public pieces, around these sculptures, and they're just living and saying saying a whole lot in the space while we are there say doing our thing, whatever that may be. In this case, obviously, like these are um, um, BLM protests, Look at this, this guy and his horse. He's so heroic looking. <laughs> and you know, it's just, it's, you know, it's interesting. It's just, it's very powerful, these horses, these, these guys on horses. I mean, it's always there and it says something like they're like hovering above this crowd. And, and you know, well, these people are speaking up too. When enough is enough, the public will let you know.
I guess we're all familiar with these images now. So thankfully we have um, people making um, art to, that also um, like express, you know, from my point of view, and you know, you know, so that's great. We're we're um even we have um Augusta Savage, you know, um in the 30s, um making her mark, and you have like Simone Lay right now, and like you know, so you, you you know, we have we have a voice. We have we're we're starting to put our stamp on the world in a in a in a in monu with monumental piece figures piece right here as well, Rockefeller Center. And it's me in Brooklyn. So, um, you've seen my inspiration. Now you're gonna see a little bit of um, more, more inspiration and then, then process. Um, really inspired by Ife sculptures. These um, are um, smaller, slightly smaller than life um, heads, um, bronze heads that were made for a spiritual purpose um, to, to, um, to, to focus um, energies and to focus on these uh, spiritual people, pe uh, spe people of um, um, with a, uh, importance in the community um, after they've been, uh, after they've passed. So these pieces um, have a very charged and, and powerful and, um, and actually very beautiful, undeniable, no matter what um, century it was made in. These were made in around the 13th century. And they feature um, simple, beautiful heads. And like these pieces, uh, these first three have scarification, um, uh, uh, tribal marks from uh, the people. Um, and, uh, it's just the, the interesting thing about the culture um, of these, uh, these uh, the head is very important. The head is like the house of this, the spirit. Like this is everything, the body is less important. And um, so a lot can be said and a lot can be felt and expressed through, the, through uh, just the head in these cases. And also the colossal has all my cats. Another inspiration of mine. And, uh, oh, I can't show these videos apparently. Let's see if I can actually get it to play. I'm actually glad I'm actually able to play this, the presentation. So I'm not gonna like, you know, rock the boat. We're gonna keep going. <laughs> So um, I, um, this is me working on actually my first public uh, piece uh, called Everyone Breaks. And I'm actually breaking that down the stuff, the, the piece. This is made from clay, like water-based clay. And I, you know, I've stuffed, stuffed it with, um, foam where I can to actually get the, the, the bulk that I needed, but mostly it's, it's like thousands of plant, pounds of clay used to make these, these pieces. This is a structure. This is an example of the structure, the underlying structure um, made from like hand plotting points that I have on, on, onto this model that you might see in the bottom. Everyone breaks. Funny story about this piece. Um, <laughs> uh, this piece, this is my, like I mentioned before, this is the first piece that I, I've had in the public, uh, in the in public, the public art piece. And this is Riverside Park, right by um, Trump Place. Uh, I, I knew I was gonna have this site. Um, and uh, to get this site, the, this site was in front of um, Trump Place 
And that is actually an inspiration of why I actually decided to do, to do these African heads. I was doing other, I was doing abstract pieces as well, like kind of like sort of what you see here, these metal geometric shapes and things like that. And, and I wasn't, when I got the site, I wasn't exactly sure what I was gonna do, but then I ended up like, really loving the idea of having, this is 2016 around the presidential election. I really wanted to have really big African heads um, around Trump place. Somehow that felt right for me, and especially in this site where, you know, you're definitely not gonna see any African anything. Um, I, I wanted to have that African presence just on a really big scale that you could not like, you know, look away from. So there you go, everyone breaks. And Rose actually, uh, she mentioned uh, this uh, Biggie piece. This is me working on Biggie. This is some of the um, uh, technical uh, drawing, like sketches into tech more technical drawings for, and then a little bit more, just, just me working on uh, the large scale piece. Um, and this is, um, this piece is based on, on me. It's my alter ego. It's not me, but it's really more my alter ego. Um, I had, um, uh, uh, this piece was going in uh, Fort Greene Park, uh, 2019, I believe, in Fort Greene Park. And, uh, and in the corner of Fort Greene Green Park, it was um, the, it was, um, sort of like situated right by the park where it's just really green lush area. And then you have like um, this um, embankment of like low income housing, sort of like, you know, that the whole development and you have like a really gentrified, like, you know, famously gentrified Fort Green area. This is like this kind of three corners there um, where I ended up putting this three headed um, sculpture. Oh, I really hope I have it here, some there, good, here it is. Um, and um, it's sort of represented for me like past, present and future, or like, you know, and like also it had a lot of, it represented a lot for me, but for in the end you have this big African head, like, you know, right there in the place where the neighbors told me like, why did we get this? Like a lot of people were really shocked to see it. Like, first of all, like, how is this piece care <laughs> like like no we don't get anything I heard like people say stuff like we don't get anything here everything good is on the other side of the park you know but so it was like all these things that I've heard like things like these comments that I heard from um, neighbors like it was, was exactly the reason why I decided to like I proposed to have the piece exactly on that corner of the park so this is really site-specific um, and really satisfying to have to hear the input of the people like um, uh, for, for so many reasons, like everything I wrote down just, just came true. Like this, as far as like the reactions and the discussions afterwards, the features of the, um, the feature of, of, of this, my alter ego here, um, with the, um, clearly African, like nose and the, and the feet and the eyes, the forward, the, everything, the hair, um, um, you might, I don't know how many people might take it for granted to not to, to, that this is something that is not seen. And when it is, it's like, it, it hits, it hits you. Like, um, uh, have people saying things like, um, uh, she looks like me or like the nose, like a lot of it was a lot about like a lot of like very, um, um, people very interested in the features, like, like the nose and things like that. Um, I don't know how much, actually, how much time do we have? Um, because there's so, so many little stories, stories and I'm like, man, I don't, I don't, I don't know how much time um, I have. Um, I'm going to ask Professor Kane to chime in because we started a little late and it's her class. So I know she has her class schedule. So um, uh, Lee, do you, do you want to? We are, we're fine. Um, we, I, we don't need to do anything else. So, you know, we had picture, I guess we had said about an hour and we we're going to start one. We're okay. We're, our okay. class goes till 2.30. So. There's Great. plenty of time to ask so if questions. we go to 2.30, just make sure we leave a little time for some questions, but you know, we're in here, it's working. And I think this, this work is really valuable and important to share. So thank you. 
Yes. Okay. We can even put a pin on that. Just if you like, I can tell a story a little later, but it was something that was powerful for me, but we can, uh, we can keep going. Um, there's no video. This is a walk around of the piece. Another piece, uh, take me with you. This was at Socrates Sculpture Park. This is the, um, the one, on, the piece on the left shows the uh, model that I was, uh, the model to, that I used to enlarge the, uh, the, the larger piece in the background. And this is after it was casted. So it's all dried up and it cracked and I didn't, I never got to cast. It's a lot of a huge process to cast something so large. So though I would love to have casted it, I, you know, with this, in this cracked state, I did not, but I just, I love the picture just to show the kind of like, um, the, the process, the wearing um, and of time on the piece. And that for me is, says a whole other thing. And it's actually part of some of the work that I have done, have done later. A little bit more process. Uh, this, the piece on the left, the photograph on the left shows, um, well, this, this shows um, that the piece had to be covered every night um, this is in Socrates Sculpture Park outside in the elements. Um, and um, it took about an hour to cover every night if I was just, you know, just with my two hands, an hour. Um, uh, if there was help, a little bit less, but it took, um, it took a lot to actually get this piece uh, made. And, um, and I, this piece on the, um, left shows the process of covering things like that and to uncover um uh it, you know you have to work at a certain kind of speed and 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 uh, and thickness of clay in order to get everything um to not fall off the armature and like just be a disaster but everything worked out it was an interesting process very interesting process <laughs> and it was in interesting to do something like this. It's not like this, this is not something that's done very often and for sure not in public. So it, um, there was, you know, in that, if you've ever been to the park, there was like sort of a stage, to, but it was um, um, still had to focus on doing things like in, in the right, on the right, you see like, uh, you see um, a rubber mold, um, the rubber portion of the mold um, to create the actual concrete piece in the end. So there had to be a rubber, this piece, this clay here had to, had to be covered in rubber and then a harder um, mold was put on top of it in order to make um, uh, the final cast. So the small model that you see on the, on the right, that has, um, you can see that I'm, I'm putting the sculpture, the piece in kind of the place where I can imagine where I knew the site was gonna be. So you can see I'm holding it up for a reason. This is just like um, to, to, for positioning so I can verify that it's gonna look good in, in, in the light. So um, this is a, just another um, reason why I really like to have models because you can actually, you know, the sun is, is going to react the same way at the piece when the piece is six inches as it will when the piece is 12 feet, which, which the piece was finally in the end. Oh, I, <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, there's like lots of little stories here. There's a bird here that was following me at four in the morning and it's kind of wildly ended up going on top of the, uh, the head the next day. It was sort of like I needed a little sort of sign to, so like, keep me going with this, with this project. Um, and this, this is my little bird friend. <laughs> so this is a part, this is the, um, a moment in the installation at um, Socrates. Spaceworks uh, was helping to, to, you know, they really heroically um, installed this piece into place with these, um, with this um, boom truck. This image of my tools, and again, you see that's the piece of on the on the right that's just like dried out and going to be um, all that clay is going to be just broken down and brought back to to its um, malleable state where people, someone else can use it. 
And this is actually a model of my um, kind of what I used to work on and fig to figure out what I would do for the next for uh, Rocket Black. Uh, I'm going to show you that a little bit later on in the um, in the slides, and I can't show this either. Huh. Oh well. Next slide. And this is Rocket Black. It's currently in Queensbridge Park um, for another couple of weeks. This is just a, some kind of a sort of like technical drawings that I'd use to figure out what I would do in the end. I knew I would. Um, I knew I wanted to represent past, present, and future, and and also have a vessel. Um, a, a vessel, sort of, this is the most basic, um, I, I started with this um, small sculpture of a vessel and then I kind of like create it in different ways so to, to get the idea across. And eventually this is what we have right now in, in the park. Um, this is uh, to re represent sort of like a river goddess, sort of goddess by the river sort of, um, and this is why I wanted to have this kind of something to represent a vessel. So here is my drawing for the idea of a like kind of like concept drawing, and then eventually um, the piece, the final piece on this side. This the slides might could have been in a little bit of a better order here, but um, let's see what I can do. Oh, so um, this is the last slide. So, so um, I just wanted to talk a little bit more about this piece. Um, um, last piece that I've let, that I did for the public space, and it really is like um, wow. I, I mean, it was um, it was through uh, Worthless Studio, this uh, organization called Worthless Studio Studios Plywood Protection Project, um, and basically they collected plywood from the stores, um, the storefront. Um, during the BLM uprising, they, they collected the, the sort of all much of that plywood and chose uh, five different artists to do um, uh, public sculptures around the city. And I have queens, I, I've gotten queens to, to install in this, in this um, site. Um, so this piece turned out in the end to be a site specific piece. And, um, and and uh, if you can, see, I'm not sure I can't, there's no video, so you can't see some of, hopefully you can see a little bit of uh, the side of the piece right by the head. Um, there's a little bit of the graffiti that's still, that from the original um, pieces that were pulled off of the streets is still the same graffiti as I, I retained a little bit of that into um, in the um, final piece. Um, even though the overall piece is black, I really felt like it had to have a stamp of the actual life of the street, given the um, background of uh, the wood. And um, public places in New York, it's not really a thing to like to have to feature graffiti. But you know, the way I in kind of like uh, inject like had it, got it in there, I just really just didn't cover a bit of it up and made it sure made sure it looked like it's a part of the design. Um, and because I really felt like it had to have that like voice, you know, so people really maybe ask questions and figure out why this piece was here and why it has graffiti on it. It actually became a little bit of a point of confusion at, you know, at some point because people thought it was graffiti from the street, but, you know, technically it was, but um, those kind of details I, I felt needed to stay in in order to, again, you know, piece, pieces need to, um, cause discussion. And this is why I kind of, this was a part of my, you know, um, keeping the realness of the piece, you know, intact. And, um, and yeah, and it, and it you know, caused discussion. <laughs> so, so in the end, um, that is an important thing, because we want to keep the conversation going of why this, why, why these pieces existing, you know. Um, so, yeah, so that's the presentation. I don't know. I can go back and talk about anything if you guys want. Um, I guess we can go into Q&A.
Yeah, that was great. Thank you so much for sharing all those images with us um, and, and walking us through. I know I want to recommend um, that uh, anyone who's very interested in Thon's work to visit her website because there are a lot of videos actually just as developing artists. I think her website is a great example of what a website could be for an artist. And she does include a lot of the videos. I think she might have been trying to show some of us today. So um, they're really wonderful. So I would check out her site. Um, I'm sure Professor Kane will be happy to share a link. Um, I guess we can, uh, um, Lee, if I could ask you uh, to kind of run the Q&A because obviously you can see the students bigger than the mini owls that they are on our screen. Um, and so if you want to open the floor to questions, we have a little bit of time. Okay, uh, um, do you have to escape <coughs> their screen? Because you won't be able to see us if unless you escape share screen. Okay, I'll, um, yeah. I mean, you can't see us anyway, because we're so tiny. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but students can come up. So I, I had given them the website, so they have had a chance to do some looking. And um, um, so, and, and hopefully have, they have some questions um, about either the work or um, things you said in the presentation. So I think, um, yeah, if you stop share, maybe that'll. Yeah. But, but they can still just come up. It doesn't matter. Um, it's okay. Um, so we can just, uh, did, Rose, were you the one who opened it or? No, I opened it, but like. Um, <laughs> it's fine, no... it looks great. It doesn't looks matter. Great. Doesn't oh, matter. I see it, I see it, I see it, got you. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay, so it doesn't matter. And um, so um, class, um, come on up. So uh, let's see, we'll start, Victoria, you wanna come on up? Um, they have to come up because the the speaker doesn't pick up from a distance. So okay. So I think doesn't it get you if you're right over here? Let's see. I believe so. Hi. 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 Um, my question is um, for your rocket black sculpture. I was wondering um, what sort of vessels you took influence from for the vessel aspect of it. Um, I. Well, at one point, the piece I was going to use Maya Angelou for the piece to as the uh, portrait head for the piece, and Maya Angelou um, has um, a connection to Ghana, which I think is actually um, ancestral connection, and she she does as well. Um, but you know, you know, as far as she knows, she does as well. So I looked at a lot of um, Ghanaian, Ghanaian vessels. Thank you. Who else? Who else has questions? Come on up. I asked you to write down some questions. Oh, come on up, please do. Thank you. Um, hello. Hi. Um, so I wanted to ask, um, in your, uh, in your like, I guess, um, for how long you've been an artist, um, how did you, firstly, how did you like arrive at sculpture as a medium, but also like what steps did you take to be able to do like public art? Just like, I know there's grants and stuff, but like what did you specifically do? Okay, yeah, um, I'll, um, um, <laughs> sorry, my, okay, so um, I, I knew I had um, interest in, in sculpture, um, but I didn't, I, I sort of touched on it. And then I kind of like um, backed off for maybe like very practical reasons. And also because I was interested in a whole lot of things. And I was doing like, I, I, I started um, professionally as a designer. I, I was designing, I was web, I was doing web design, including code. I was doing um, video editing. I was doing a whole bunch of stuff to the point where I was just like, all right, Tanda, come on. <laughs> it's like, you know, kind of focus in on something. Uh, and, um, you know, I, 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 this, that, all that was great, but I ended up like, um, uh, um, starting to like practice with, um, physical things where I knew I wanted to build in, in a larger scale. So I started to do like metal work and, and, um, and, and I started to work on, you know, sculpting practical, like very practical studio uh, sculpture, just because I knew I wanted to, you know, I wanted to, to work, but I wanted to, I knew I wanted to work larger. Um, 
Uh, so I ended up, I went to actually Art Students League in New York here to like figure out some of the practical things that I needed to do in order to like get it done. And, um, and I just started to practice at it. And, and at, it happened to be that at Art Students League, there was a program maybe similar to what you guys have there, where it's, um, uh, it's public, it's, uh, uh, it's geared towards like, you know, public art in, in particular, specifically. Um, it was a five-year program where it was like for five years, it was actually just, you know, a season, but every, um, there were five years of selection of artists. And I would, I think the last year I, I was, I, um, was selected to be a part of this program where we focused on getting public art into public places. It wasn't any specific lesson, but it was more like, um, uh, a practical, like how we're going to get this piece in the public space, you know, how are we going to get this piece uh, in the final site, meaning like, um, here's the site, here do you, you know, you have the site available, and um, you guys run along and do your, you know, figure out how you're going to get your piece done. So basically, we had, you know, that kind of motivation to actually have a site is, is how I knew that I, you know, I knew that I can go ahead and actually get a piece done. And that was enough motivation to actually work and get it done. You know, so I hope I answered your question. Um, Can I ask a, a question um, just to kind of knock in there? Because I um, and I think I, I mentioned that I might ask you this in email. And I think by you turning around, I'm going to uh, open this up. So this is a, a class in uh, practices. And uh -huh. um, I know because uh, a little background, a other way that Tana and I life overlapped is that I had a rented a studio space um, right. uh, in Brooklyn and then one day saw Tanda at an opening and realized that she also had a studio upstairs um, in the same building, but um, her space was a live workspace. And I think that's something that's a little unusual to some of us that, um, to some of us that don't live in New York City, but also especially, you know, live work and you work in your computer is one thing, but live work and you make sculpture is a whole other thing. Do you want to talk about that choice and um, how, how it may pan out? Because that, that's exciting, I think, for us to hear about. Yeah. Um, uh, so it, 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 it really, being here with a child, actually, there's a child who's actually calling me. I don't, hope, I don't know if you guys hear, but there's a, a child here. So there's certain things that I can't do in this, in this space. Which is fine when I have when I have a studio on you know when I do have one of my big projects I do most of the work here I do the modeling work here and I do the and I make it you know I design the piece so that it can actually be brought out into this out into the um into to the next site to actually do the um the more toxic portion of the work so the fact that I have a live workspace and I work large determines on you know the, what material what kind of clay I'm going to use so if um one of the first slides that you saw um where I'm working on these like water-based clay pieces and they're and it's super large did I can't do that here in this in this um in this apartment this loft this like space where my kid is just here even me um because you know that much clay water-based clay you know with you know it goes hand in hand with mold. Like mold would just take over the space and I wouldn't be able to like, you know, I'd probably have like asthma or something, you know, uh, wouldn't work out with that, with living in the same space that I'm working. But now I'm working with um, with like plasticine. So it's like, you know, it's, it, it, it stay, stays open. I can leave it open. There's no, there's not a question of having any issue with mold. So, so like in, in a, it's, so there's good and bad things that are always have it available. I can be here and, you know, I can, you know, and there's a way I can balance what's going on with my family while I'm here. But yeah, like certain things I do have to hold back on because of, because, you know, I'm, I'm here living here. And plus there's, child, like there's a child here and there's a cat here too. So <laughs> these, these things are um, some of these things that I have to think about when I'm working here, but I'm actually, you know, um, working on having a dedicated space um, that is apart from the home. Who else? Who else? Thank you. Thank you. Who else has questions? I ask you to look at the work and also to think about things that were said um, uh, during the presentation. Please come on up. Thanks, Alana. 
And if you stand right back here, there, go ahead. A little and then I think after this question, we might wrap it up because I know that um, toddlers are, are, are bound. I, I am including myself. Yours in too, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think if we could take this moment, you know, since this is an interesting class to talk about it, that, you know, a lot of us as practicing artists, um, Lee also, same thing. She was working, making work, having children, uh, figuring out how to keep it all together. Um, and it's part of the practice. It's part of the dance. Um, so it's it's nice to have you be so honest and, and public and share with us. It's it's nice for, I think, our students to see that. Um, men and women alike, we, you got families, you have obligations, even if it's not kids, we all have obligations. So it's it's important to, to acknowledge those. All right, I'll be quiet. One last question, and then I think we'll all go. Um, I wanted to know what your favorite part of your art making process is. Oh, God. Definitely the modeling large, definitely the modeling large on a large scale. I mean, that's where, that's my, it's just like, that's my jam. Like this, that's where I was just, that's where I, where I worked my best, but it takes a while to get there because I still do, you know, the production is in-house. It's like, I don't have, you know, it's mostly with the projects that I've been getting. It's just like very hands-on in-house. Like, so it's like, um, a lot of um, prep, a lot of like, um, you know, number checking and like making sure everything's stable. And then I get to just jump on it and like start to like, you know, play splashing around and long. That's, that's my favorite part for sure. The modeling on a large scale. Great, thank you. It's good to know the joy part, right? The joy yeah. part. <laughs> it's like even like this, we're just mentioning it, I got happy. Yeah, me too. I did too. <laughs> so well, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you so much, Tonda, for um, joining us today. And thank you for being so patient through all our technicals. I, you know, I, the, the Zoom lecture series is both a blessing because we have the opportunity of people like you come to speak to us in Pennsylvania while you're in New York. Um, but it's a curse because um, technology is uh, a challenge for all of us. Uh, so it tricky right because i'm like i usually You're like it works i'm yesterday. usually like this with the tech huh <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think it's good that you mentioned that you used to do coding and yet zoom cripples us all so there you go <laughs> <laughs> oh i don't code um, anymore <laughs> but then um uh so thank and thank you professor kane for hosting us and thank you um the class for being so engaged and for sitting through all of this um as you know uh, tonda is one of several from the lecture series i hope you guys jump on to see future ones um, if you don't see them live and they're recorded. Um, we edit them out so everyone looks glamorous and seamless, don't worry. Um, <laughs> um, but thank you very much for sharing your practice with us and sharing um, your interests and also for really being kind of very vocal about the problems of representation in public art. I think it's an important topic right now and I think having people come speak to our students directly um, is making us more engaged with what needs to be done in the future. Um, which is a lot. There is a lot of work to be done. Um, so uh, thank you again. And um, uh, maybe we'll see you again in virtual or real life. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs>